Hi everyone, welcome to this fortnightly tools of frontline staff session. Uh, we've got one presentation today from Lanessa from Age UK, who's going to be talking about some digital inclusion support. Um, and then we can uh, uh, have our open discussion after that. Um, but lots of time for Q&A as well. So I'm going to pass across to Lanessa and thanks for coming along. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I haven't prepared any slides because it's the first time I've attended one of these meetings, but I'm sure I'll be back again with some more information and further details in the future. So um, to start off with, um, Age UK East London used to have offices in Dalston Lane. Um, we have now acquired um, premises at Mary, Mary Lloyd, um, sent the Mary Lloyd Centre, which is in Queensbridge Road. And part of the digital inclusion offer that we're offering to residents in, the, in, in Hackney is a drop-in session, a weekly drop-in session and a six-week course at the Mary Lloyd Centre starting on the 17th of this month. So the um, drop-in session will be in the mornings between 10 and 12.30. And the courses will start at 2.45 to 4 o'clock. So the, the courses run for six weeks at a time. Um, any, and any older people that are interested in attending the courses would need to give the, the manager, the site manager, a call. I have flyers which I can share with John and he can share with the with all of you. Um, and they can register their interest and then they can be put down on the waiting list. The topics normally that are covered in the sessions and in the drop-ins are things like emails, um, having how to send attachments to different organizations, because on everything is gone online now. So basic functionality with their tablets or their smartphones, you know, the settings, how to get around all of that. Online security, we, we do a lot on that. Um, Zoom, how to use Zoom, how to get started with Zoom, Google Docs, any kind of media apps like iPlayer, um, YouTube, all of that kind of stuff, all that kind of things. And even Bluetooth, we've done topics on that in the past as well. Um, in the past, we have had um, loans of devices to, to clients. However, the um, supply of tablets has dwindled quite significantly. So we're in the process of trying to acquire new funding to get more tablets and connectivity out there on loan to support um, our, our clients. So that's not as we're not kind of promoting that as such because we haven't got that many to to do to, to deliver. Um, we do also have a digital buddy service whereby if clients are unable to come to the centre for various reasons, they can um, get support via a Zoom um, connection and a, a buddy, a volunteer, that will give them up to an hour's um, session, uh, up to one hour session per week for up to three months. So that's another um, level of support that we offer as part of the digital inclusion. Um, the drop-in sessions are normally around half an hour per client, depending on how many people are waiting to be seen, and also depending on how many volunteers we have available on, on the day as well. But obviously, if there's not enough, if there's not that many volunteers, then the, the, the time that that particular client will have with the, with the person delivering the support may be less maybe down to 20 minutes but we are trying to get volunteers involved with that kind of support so that the the level of um support available is suitable for the clients that are coming in to get to gain that support if that makes sense um sorry i'm rambling on a little bit i'm a bit nervous because it's the first time i've done this i don't know no, anybody, so I'm like, uh, but thank you for for having me on. If you have any questions, please 
please do ask. Yeah. All right, so that's, that was great. And um, <laughs> no, no, it was. And uh, <laughs> it was really good to see the range of options as well. Mm. Um, there's lots of, lots of different, I'm aware of sort of different schemes available with, you know, with the council and other places where it's like either a drop in or a digital buddy or a longer course, but you kind of combine all three. So it's like a really holistic offer. So it sounds, sounds really good. Um, does anyone have any questions, Charlie? I'm just wondering if there are any local organizations that you're kind of reaching out to around this scheme. Cause I think like, I think there's a lunch club based at the Murray Lloyd center as well. Um, and there's also, um a near i think there's a walking group run by an organization called skyway and an estate basically right around the corner from um the mary lloyd so i just wondered like who you're working with in terms of kind of reaching out to the demographics people are working with yeah uh, part of some of the our part we've got five other people in that center one of them is the um so we've got huddleston center the mrs independent living there hackney carers are their choice in Hackney and the luncheon club are there. So some of the luncheon club uh, members have already signed up to um, the course. So yeah, we are we have we are aware of some of the other organisations that are in in the area, and we also are working with um, Hack Homerton Digital Inclusion Team because they're providing the NHS app support for um, patients. So we're going to be having a few workshops, independent one-off workshops, just delivering that kind of support for patients. So watch this space for, for more information on that one as well. I'd say it might be worth reaching out to um, Rachel King, who's sometimes on these calls, who is the HCVS coordinator for the lunch clubs. So I think obviously if you're targeting that kind of older demographic there, mm. are, there are about 14 or so lunch clubs that are running across the borough who might be kind of an opportunity to refer to speak about what you're doing and kind of get the right people in who need to be in that kind of thing excellent thank you um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll send you her email thank you so much nice one thanks charlie um does anyone else have any other questions or ideas for collaboration maybe I was wondering sort of how many people you usually sort of get, you might have covered this, but how many people you usually get through the door on the, the drop-ins, how many people can do the courses, what's the sort of numbers like? Well, we haven't done it in Hackney, this is a, um, we're just starting right. in Hackney, but in the other boroughs, normally on average drop-ins, we get around 10 to 14. And on the courses, we have up to eight um learners per course because if you get a bigger size any bigger than that then it, it doesn't it's more of a it's more of a drop-in than the actually a, a actual course because you've only got one tutor and that tutor has to try and accommodate the, all of those learners at the same time and we try to have learners on a similar um level of ability just so everyone feels that they're on mm. the same same path because there's no point having someone who knows qu quite advanced and then someone who doesn't even know how to turn something on it's just it just wouldn't work so yeah yeah and is it mainly is it often people who sort of have a device but are scared of it and don't know how to use it or is it also lots of people who just don't have any access to wi-fi or, or a device in the first place or is it, i guess it's a bit of both it's a bit of both because we do, we do have tablets that we have for for the classes so if someone doesn't have a device or is just contemplating on having given it a go then that's what they're there for but we normally encourage people to bring in what they normally would use because that's what they're going to be using on their day with their day to day um because if they learn on something completely different and then go home and try on what they normally have we normally get a lot of confusion and then it some people just puts them off and they won't come back again so we try to use what they have and work with what they've got mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense um yeah does anyone else have any any questions for Lanessa or ideas or maybe experiences from from, from your own work of supporting people who are digitally excluded we know it's obviously a massive issue across the borough so yeah wondering if anyone's got any other experiences Gina. 
Yeah, hi, sorry, I just missed the first few minutes, 15, 14 minutes of the session. So, Linessa, well, um, nice to meet you. Um, sorry, which organisation are you from? Age UK East London. Oh, Age UK, oh, okay. What we have noticed is we've, um, we've been working with some GPs surgeries and what we've noticed is when um, patients register that they have an email address and then going forward, communication is done via email. A lot of patients don't actually get that information because there's a difference between having an email address and actually knowing how to use that email address so therefore a lot of the appointments and things like that get missed yeah for sure that that definitely ring rings true um Charlie did you want to come in uh thanks uh John I was wondering our libraries also have a digital body scheme mm. and are you linked in with that because I think also they have the ability to Give, they have some level of sims available for residents as well if if they meet the right criteria i can't remember off the top of my head what those are but i just wonder if you're linking in with that, that work too yeah i've spoken with um anthony anthony kane from digital yeah. and it development yeah, so, yeah yeah so yeah we've we've had a conversation and he was i think they're in the process of just getting the loaning agreement um finalized um yeah so yeah we're working together <laughs> I think on the overall theme of um, digital, um, Madeline Maxwell, who obviously put us in touch, Vanessa, um, and some probably many of you would have would have met her. I think she's come to one of these ones before. Um, but she's the digital inclusion leader at Homerton, and she is doing a stellar job in trying to bring all these di different parts of the system together. Because, like we're alluding to, there's lots of great individual projects and great support out there but it lacks a bit of um uh i don't know not governance but it lacks a bit of you know bringing it all together basically so um i think she and um, we're all really keen for people who want to get involved in this or have an offer for residents themselves to engage with um that group um so anthony is part of it vanessa myself i think krista from health watch is usually on these calls is involved um but i guess yeah if, if people want to sort of um get a bit more directly involved with all of this stuff then um, feel free to give me a shout and I can link you in with with Madeline um, and I'm, all, I'm also thinking that um, perhaps in November we're going to try and organize a sort of digital themed um, session and um, one of these but more digital themes so bringing together Madeline and, and obviously Nessie are very welcome to come and Anthony and and um, people from the council who are working on this to have a bit of a one sort of present what's available out there but to have a wider discussion with partners about what's needed what the challenges are um just to bring a bit of energy behind it i suppose so yeah watch this space i suppose and um, anyone else with anything they want to add any questions any ideas no okay oh abdul Please come in. Hello. Hi. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I did ask a question in chat, uh, John, Charlie, uh, but it was just oh, regarding um, Linessa's courses, drop-in sessions. How many would you be looking to conduct in a month within the borough, say, for instance? The, on, the drop-in sessions are ongoing as well as, the as well as the courses, but they are six weeks long. So we'll have one six-week course and then another, and it will just continue like that. Great. And I can, if you, yeah, if you want to email me the um, flyers, Vanessa. Yeah, you're I can put them out in our newsletter. So, and that goes out to not just everyone on the call, but everyone who's on the mailing list, which is, um, yeah, lots of people have lost time. So, um, uh, that should get the word out as well. And so, when did you say they're actually launching? 17th. 17th of September. Yeah. Brilliant. Cool. Um, Right, does anyone else have any questions or comments? Welcome, Abby. We're just coming to the end, I think, of Vanessa's section. Um, we've been talking about digital inclusion and the great work that Age UK, Sunderland are doing and uh, other organisations. 
don't know if you have any immediate thoughts on digital inclusion i'm putting you on the spot as you've joined but if not we can uh, wrap up the session and move on hi everyone hi everybody. sorry i missed it i don't have any immediate thoughts other than <laughs> That's all right. it is a it is a big consideration for all of the communities we work with yeah absolutely cool all right let's leave it there thanks so much Lena. so that was great and um yeah i'll share all the info in the newsletter nice work um well that that was the only um actual presentation we've got this time round. um so we normally now move on to just open floor open discussion for anyone who wants to promote anything their organizational team are doing any sort of insights or concerns they want to raise any good news stories um the floor is yours. So anyone who wants to come in, please do so. Charlie. Hello, everyone. Um, I think I flagged this in the last couple of meetings. Um, we're working with an organization called Crew Energy, who deliver energy advice. Um, you know, what's the best tariffs to be on around certain things about your boiler, how you can be energy efficient, etc. And they're really keen to make relationships with voluntary sector organizations in the borough and deliver sessions jointly to help residents get you know the best deals they can on their energy and to make sure they're being kind of in order to maximize their income um at the moment we're helping them kind of build up their schedule for the winter about places they're dropping into to deliver that advice if that's something you're interested in exploring as an organization and you have a session you know that has regular attendance by quite a few people or even a one-off thing that you're organizing where you think you might have a group of people attend and you would like them to get energy advice please reach out to us i mean we can't guarantee that we can come we're back we're only in the we're only going to be in the borough they're in the borough sorry three days a week at the moment um potentially quite a lot more in the beginning of september could do some work in schools but the, generally three days a week so we're really just trying to build that out for all of winter so if you get in touch with me um i'll put my email in the chat um around that i'm very happy to kind of see what see what's possible about linking that up with your organization as well that's my kind of two cents john nice one thanks charlie um juna hi um i normally i regularly kind of attend your sessions but for the last couple of sessions i haven't been able to attend so i haven't had a chance to um give an update. So um, I work for City and Hackney Carers Centre and we've just managed to um, move into our new office at Mary Lloyd Centre. Um, we are now offering drop-in sessions for unpaid carers to come and see us on a Wednesday. So if you do come across any unpaid carers who are interested in attending our drop-in sessions um it starts from 10 to one o'clock on wednesdays but before they can come and see us they'd need to register with us yeah so that's the only information <laughs> thank you great thanks Gina. that's really useful um if you want me to i can include it in the newsletter um completely up to you if you want to send me the details i can i can put it in there um so yeah, yeah i'll yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll email you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Neil, welcome. Hey, Jack. Um, might be just an echo chamber of council tax staff, because I don't know who's who's council tax or council tax, who's council staff and who isn't. But just to let those know, and it's kind of ironically that it's on the back of a digital inclusion conversation. But um, just to sort of say, and we'll put this forward and promote it more formally in the coming weeks, but the council tax department is joining the 21st century and having a residence portal back up and running. Um, soft launching that over the next week or two at a very low level of residents being able to just see their account and see what things look like, and then rolling out the ability to change your account, i.e. set up a direct debit making arrangement, et cetera, et cetera. So um, make no bones about it. It is due to every council in the country, the financial pressures are under, going to help us hopefully reduce contact to front of house, either via phone or via drop-ins for those residents who are able and want to engage digitally, which the upside should be we will hopefully be able to provide a better service to those who can't do those things but we will be encouraging cajoling working with residents to enable them to self-serve 
but it's just you know that that's happening we will be putting some comms out on it but if anyone sort of from the voluntary sector is in that space and wants sort of once we're up and running to talk about what it can do what it can't do we'll happily have that conversation because we want to sort of get the message out to the residents that there is a way for them to sort of look up things for themselves and then deal with us post that position so yeah i'll leave that there but if anyone's interested my i'm on these my emails will be on it so um just get in touch and i'll happily get someone to give an update on the art of the possible that's great thanks neil um would you be able to put your email in the chat just because um because the because the invitation list is so long for these meetings people can't <laughs> actually see who's invited it's like a google a boring google tech issue but they won't be able to see your email on the list basically um yeah as long as people promise not right. to slam me i've put it in the um I'll put yeah. it in the, I've, I've got enough um whatever people spam people on these days got enough of yeah. everything they don't need it so no it's in there and yeah feel free to reach out to me and i'll redirect traffic as appropriate perfect that's really good and that's that's uh, uh -huh. great news i'm sure it must have been a long journey to get the portal up and running it's not there yet john but i'm confident it will be we're signing good. off over the next couple of days but yeah it's been a long and painful road i believe as the song goes so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> long and winding yeah long and winding. <laughs> <Put painful. laughs> that would have been a very different song um great that's that's great news now um uh, i think there was a question for you juna in the chat from rachel i think um by unpaid do you mean just the the carers allowance no it's unpaid means anybody who's caring for a family friend family member um the difference is um a paid is obviously somebody a paid carer is somebody who's employed you know um unpaid carer can be anybody they don't have to be receiving carers allowance right. yeah thanks thanks for clarifying that makes sense no problem cool. uh anyone else wants to promote anything anything they're doing ask a question of anyone on the call always got a really good range of uh, experience on this world genevieve hi john hi everybody just to, you probably already know everyone but the um housing support the emergency support fund that was due to end has been extended for six months and will carry through the winter through the end of april 2025 so that's really good news we're very excited about it here at the council and those organizations that feel like it would be helpful with their clients please let them know and if if it's all right, John, I'd also like to just remind people that may be involved working with uh, rough sleeping females, rough sleeping women. Um, Hackney is participating in the Women's Rough Sleeping Census this year, the week of the 23rd through the 27th. We have a few organizations supporting us. We'll have dedicated workers in a private place to interview women uh, in the service center Monday through Friday. We won't have any staff available over the weekend. If you are interested or you have a list of women that you'd like to contact, we're really looking at women who've experienced rough sleeping in the last 90 days to tell us about that experience. It's 10 questions anonymized. I'm happy to share the questionnaire with you, which will go live uh, on the 23rd. And that's all for me today. Thanks. Thanks, Genevieve. Um, I can include the census stuff in the newsletter if that's helpful. And uh, if you want to send the stuff through. Great, thank you very much. Cool, and yeah, good point on the household support fund, which uh, yeah, the government yeah, like you say, now it'll be renewed um, for, for another six months. Um, so that that is good news. Um, anyone else have anything they want to share, Abby? Yes. So since the last tool session, um, the organizer with Cooperation Town that I believe we've mentioned on the call before, um, that person has started. Um, so we've got an organizer working in Hackney who's helping groups of residents or groups of people start um, food buying cooperatives. So if you know, if you are interested or if you know of anyone who is interested in that and wants to get connected with Saul, um, the organizer, you can let us know. You can even drop um, your contact information in um, the chat. I'll also send in the chat the, the website for that. 
and mention that that Charlie, the the convener that he is, is meeting with Saul next week with a few colleagues as well. Um, and we're we're just compiling a list of people that have expressed interest so that Saul can get connected and start chatting with people, helping them understand what is a food cooperative? How do you actually go about starting one? What does it mean to organize with your neighbors to do that? Um, and and giving support to groups of people. Great, thanks, Abby. Um, that's really good news. Um, I was going to uh, come in here as well and talk quickly about the tools live session, which we are planning. So we're doing this meeting in person um, on October the 3rd, so about a month away. Um, and we're going to be hosting it, or we're going to be hosted by uh, Ali from Carabeet, who many of you will have seen on these calls. So um, they're based up in Dawson. Um, and it's really just put it on your radar that um, it would be fantastic to have as many uh, people there as possible. We want to recreate the space we've kind of uh, created here, but have it in person and, and have, you know, even uh a more more real connection i suppose um so it's going to be a sort of regular meeting um with a number of with a sort of few different presentations but we're hoping to extend it slightly and have a bit more time for networking and getting to know each other in person hopefully some food tea and coffee etc um so it would be fantastic to have as many of you there as possible um on monday uh, or early next week i'll probably be sending out a Google form of some kind, um, which will be very short just to indicate who wants to come, basically, just so we have an idea of numbers for food. Um, so we really appreciate if um, people could look out for that and um, just let us know if you want to come. Um, and also, if you want to talk at a session, if you want to present, um, then yeah, also get in touch and, and let us know. Um, and if anyone has any ideas of um, I guess what they want to get out of the session um it's a good opportunity to meet in in person and like i say do have a regular tool session but also think a bit more creatively about what what we all want to get out of it so i'll probably include a question on the form for you to sort of let us know what you'd be looking to get out of it but um yeah it's also just put it on your radar because i know because this meeting's been going on for quite a now a while now it's probably quite automatic to people that it's you it's online click on the link but they won't be a link on October the first, so <laughs> it's in person, not online. But yes, yeah, what I put out on your radar, Genevieve. Thanks, John. Just a thought to remind our support uh, organizations out there that Manage Migration to Universal Credit is ongoing, yep. and those that are currently receiving legacy benefits uh, who have received a letter inviting them to migrate. This doesn't happen automatically. You may already know this, but just a reminder: they must apply. And if they, they must apply within that 90 day window from the date of their letter, so that if for any reason, universal credit benefits is going to be less than what they're currently receiving under legacy benefit, they will receive at least that same amount. They will not lose out if they go through this invitation process. If they miss the window, they will only get, it will be a new application with no protection from their previous benefits. So it's really good to know if you're talking to people that you know are receiving housing benefit, working tax credit. Most of these have already received their letters. I believe the, oh, what is it, mm, support uh, blank. But, the help, uh, help to claim? No, well, there is the help to claim. But those who are yeah. receiving one element of benefit still hasn't been sent out yet. And I think it's the supported people who have supported income. And I can't remember what the real word for that is. Oh, Lee, how embarrassing. ASA. But, you know, uh, maybe. maybe that's it. Employment support allowance, yes, might be delayed. So just if you're talking to clients on benefits, you might want to flag, have they received a migration letter? People see letters from DWP and it's like, eh, I'm not opening it. You know, I'm afraid to see what's inside. I, I can understand that totally. But now is not the time to ignore those letters. Otherwise, they may lose out in the long run. So just a quick point there. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. Thanks, Genevieve. Um, a few sessions ago, we did have uh, Christina, who um, works for the CAB, come along because they're running the Help to Claim 
uh, service. Um, so if people aren't able to sort of, you know, fill out the form and, and not sure what to do themselves, there is a service there run by the CAB. So if you are working with a resident who, who needs support with that, um, yeah, that service is there and I can share the leaflet in the newsletter. And I think we're probably going to have Christina come along again, um, maybe next time or the time after, um, to talk about all of that. Um, so yeah, you, we can't really um, talk about it enough. It's really important that people are aware of aware of that uh, opportunity to get that support. Cool. Um, anyone else have anything they want to share before we potentially close the meeting? No. Oh, Charlie. Sorry to keep anyone who wants to run away from their desk. Probably you, John, because I can see you're in the office. Um, it's just something that's come up in conversation with different people over the last few weeks for myself. And I wonder if, it seems we've got Genevieve on the call, she might be able to give some texture for this. It's about wait times on the housing register. I just wanted, we often hear about people approaching the register and people in the voluntary sector often contact either myself or John about how to apply for the register. But and I'm sure you're all aware that there is a long wait for housing in Hackney, but I just wanted to give a sense of what those actual wait times are, just to help reiterate that, because unfortunately, well, the housing register is unlikely to be the solution for most residents in terms of their housing need. I mean, Genevieve will be able to give some more texture here, but like on the average wait for a two-bed property in Hackney is 12 years now. Is that right, Genevieve? That's right, Charlie. Thank you very much. It, it is uh, rather sad to say, um, even though we are building, those won't be ready for four to five years. Uh, the weight we, you know, we did dwindle down the, the regis, register and we went from 13,000 families down to 8,500, but that's still a lot of families. I think last year we were, we were able to let maybe 600. The majority of those are going to single people because it is the studios and the one beds that are more available. Um, the wait times are rather sad, I'm afraid. So by the time people have waited, their housing need will have changed. Um, so, you know, 12 to 13 years for a two bed, 25 years for a three bed, 35 years for a four to five bed. So it's not the answer to anybody's housing solution. That message needs to get across. We're trying to support people more and more with information on how to secure private rented accommodation. Because Hackney has become so expensive, remaining in Hackney is a bit of a challenge. You need about 80 grand a year combined income to get into a two bed at 2800 a month for a two bed and and the the housing benefit or the universal credit amount the local housing allowance is only like 1750 1780 for a two bed so we're a thousand away from what the market's demanding on the higher end so there are there is social housing available but it's way outside of london um with home finder uk there are some organizations out there that will offer trial um that are uh, social housing offers for a trial period of 12 months. If you do well, they'll extend it for a longer social housing with housing associations. But it's it's very scary. And people over over 55, we have a lot of over 55 accommodation. But the problem there is many over 55s are in the larger properties and would like to scale down. And we do offer incentives. But when you're in a three bedroom home, You've lived there for 35 years. Your children are gone, but this is where home is for them. This is where all your memories are. This is where your friends are. So it's hard to get people of that age to move, even though we do have a lot of people that have moved and moved down to, you know, how resized down and are very happy. But that's a hard message to convey. We are working on packaging up some, you know, uh, through stories and let people talk about what their experience was with moving and trying to maybe even offer more incentives. And I'm saying that off the cuff. We haven't done that yet. We're not ready to do that yet. Um, but like Charlie mentioned, the housing register just is not the solution to anyone's problems. We did make a mi minor change to the um, allocations policy. It used to be that care leavers aged 18 to 21 um, had to, were only made direct offers based on a quota that we had to fill. We've changed that now. All 18 to 21 year old care leavers are now eligible to apply to the housing register and will be placed in band B, 
not in band C, which is where they would have gone before had they applied. So that's trying to help our care leavers, our young people are very important. So sorry about that, but yes, that's the way it is. And Genevieve, thank you for being able to do that on the fly, but I just wanted to kind of, I know that it's been coming up in conversations I've been having and we're all aware of the scale of the need, but putting some numbers to it is I think really important in how we kind of look at the scale of that challenge. So thank well, you for being able to do that so quickly. And hopefully and without prep. Well done. Well, you, no, you know I mean, it's on our it's on the tips of our tongues every day. So uh, sadly, I'm familiar with it. But what we used to be able to offer on our website was a, a waiting time calculator where you plugged in your register number uh, and your name, blah, whatever. And it would come up with an estimated wait time for you specifically, not just generally. Um, but due to the cyber attack, that's lowered in priority. But we'll be coming up again. Uh, I hate to even say it, but may, maybe a year, which at least helps people. So right now, the message on the website is the average wait times. Uh, and of course, it never fails. There's always that one person said, well, yeah, but I know somebody who waited six years for their two beds. Hey, what do I tell you? But they probably bid on the top floor of a 13th story building that nobody else bid for. So they were successful. So there are those that may not wait if you want to improve your chances. And this is me speaking for you like we're speaking to residents. If you want to improve your wait time, bid for those properties that, that are not as attractive. So and bid because there are many who won't bid because they don't like, you know, the choices. Sad, but true. Thank you, Lou. Um Yeah, I remember I used to, so I used to work in a mayor's office doing casework and all the housing needs responses we sent out would have the averages for each, for each type of property. And I am, <clears throat> um, until that point, I wasn't aware of how severe it was. I, mean, I knew there was a housing crisis, but not quite how long those waiting times would be. So it is, yeah, it's, it is what it is, I suppose, isn't it? Cool. Um, anyone else want to come in before we close the meeting? No. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Well, that, that was a really uh, good session and a uh, great discussion on a range of issues. So uh, we're going to see you in a couple of weeks. We've got, I think, Toby from Clue Energy, who Charlie mentioned earlier, is coming along, I think, and um, possibly Christina from CAB to talk about the UC. So, um, yeah, I hope to see you all there. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, John. Good to see you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.